So in the last class, we studied the two different models of currency crisis, according to Paul Krugman. Okay. So to explain with your partner, what are the two different models? So what's common, what's common to the two models? What's common to the two models? What happens at the start? Well, first of all, we have, we're talking about the currency crisis. So we're talking about the fixed exchange rate, right? Yeah. Then? Uh, can, they, call me. they have some bad policies, right? Or a weak economy. Okay, what's next? The investors lose confidence. Is that always... Are the investors always right? You know, the thing about investors losing confidence is that if we have three areas, if we have a white area, healthy economy, okay? White is healthy. We have a gray area and we have a black area, okay? Black area is bad, very bad economy, okay? Where are the investors going to lose confidence? In which areas? Black and? Gray. Maybe gray. Okay, do you understand? Yes. So this is the problem. If we have a healthy white economy, investors don't lose confidence. Okay? But there's sometimes the crisis can be caused because of investor lack of confidence. Do you understand? Maybe our economy is okay, it's in the gray area. Okay? But investors lose conf like we're not doing good economy. It's not a healthy economy, but it's in the gray area. So the investors lose confidence, it can make things a lot worse. Do you understand? So it could be the case that in this area, if we could just recover the confidence of the investors, we could recover and be okay, right? But in the gray area, we could lose the confidence of the investors, we can fall down into the black area. Okay? So investors' confidence is also important. Okay? So we don't want to make investors panic. We're going to look at the case study of Korea, and we're going to see that the president and shouldn't say anything which makes investors lose their confidence here, right? If we're in this kind of area. So what happens after investors lose confidence? What do they do? Central bank. So the, the investors are selling. When the investors sell, what do they sell? Stocks, bonds, land, right? If they sell all those things, what do they get? Do they get the local currency? Then what are they going to do with the local currency? Are they going to keep the local currency? No. No, they're going to sell it. Okay? So they sell their investments and they sell the local currency. So the central bank, you said, central bank buys the local currency. Okay? What? This is in the first model. Central bank buys the local currency. In the second model, what does the central bank also do? Increase the interest rate. Okay? So what happens then next here? What's the problem? <coughs> Speculators attack and make it worse, right? So what happens in the case one? In the case one? Central bank is buying the local currency, right? Yes. Selling their foreign reserves. 
So what happens in the case one that stops? No reserve. No okay, so case one, no reserves left. Okay, what about case two? In case two, the central bank is increasing the interest rate to, to discourage speculators, right? And attract demand for their currency. But why do they leave in number two? Why don't they just keep increasing the interest rate till 50%, 100%, 150%? The damaging economy, so what happens? They want more no business. No business, hmm? no business, no jobs. Okay, so here we're talking about reasons to leave and reasons to stay, right? So reason to leave gets bigger. Reason to leave gets much more than reason to stay. So in Greece's case, there is no, no of this reserve, right? Just Greece's reason to leave might be bigger than Greece's reason to stay. Okay, do you understand that? Yes. We talked about the reasons to leave and the reasons to stay. So that's just a review of what we covered last time. So these, we had these two models. Do you have any question about those models? So then let's talk about uh, uh, some psychological factors which can ha happen in a crisis. Okay? Did you ever have a self-fulfilling crisis? Do you understand self-fulfilling? What does it mean, self-fulfilling crisis? Overconfidence. Hmm? Overconfidence. No. It's the opposite of overconfidence. Did you ever have a self-fulfilling crisis in your life? You said, oh, I'm going to fail this exam. I didn't study. I can't do it. I'm not going to pass the exam. Okay? Then you get very stressed. Okay? And then you think you're very negative and you think, there's no point. There's no point to study. I'm just wasting my time. I'm not going to pass the exam. Okay? Then you go to the exam. Actually, the exam was easier than you thought. And you failed the exam just by one point but you didn't study. So if you had studied, you would have passed the exam. Do you understand? That's a self-fulfilling crisis. Who made that crisis? You made the crisis yourself. By what? By your pessimism. Do you understand pessimism? Yes. Okay, optimism and pessimism. So that we can cause a crisis by pessimism. Do you understand that idea? So we talked about being in the gray area. White area, gray area, okay? black area. So we're in the gray area. But all the investors are pessimistic. Do you understand pessimistic? They're going to sell. Okay? So if many individual investors sell the currency, that's where we have the problem. We realize that here, okay? The result is that pessimism will be self confirming. So I made a bad prediction about the future, and that's what actually happened. Okay, just like with the exam. I made the bad prediction I was going to fail the exam, and then that happened, because I was very pessimistic. Okay, it's only when economic fundamentals are weak that the country can be vulnerable to this kind of problem. It's only in the gray area. Okay? In the white area, some investors might be pessimistic, but other investors are not going to listen to them. Right? The economy is very healthy. Okay? But in the gray area, some investors is pessimistic and they sell their investments, and more investors sell their investments, people start selling, okay? Then it becomes a self-fulfilling. Do you understand self-fulfilling? Yes. Self-fulfilling means we predict it and then it happens. <coughs> but we cause it to happen. Okay. <coughs> How to know we we invest in gray, gray areas. Huh? How to know we, we are in gray, we are living in the gray area? Ah, yes. White area, we know that the economy is very strong. So by looking at the economic fundamentals, like we looked at for Greece and Germany, GDP growth, current account balance, right? Fiscal government deficit, government debt, okay? Uh, productivity. Is the economy a healthy economy or not? Okay. If not, 
it's a gray area, maybe it's not very clear that it's very unhealthy or it's very healthy. So it's in the gray area that this psychological problem can cause the issue, okay? It's like you, in sports, you take the penalty kick, right? Maybe you watch the penalty shootout sometime, right? When I'm taking the penalty in sports, I think, I'm going to miss the penalty. I'm going to miss. <laughs> goalkeeper, goalkeeper looks very big. <laughs> Suddenly the goalkeeper is very big, right? He looks massive and the goal looks very small. <coughs> So sometimes you can see the player just walking up, they look like they're going to miss the penalty, right? They think I'm going to miss the penalty. And then they go up and they miss the penalty. <laughs> of course the goalkeeper saves the penalty, right? Do you understand? It's like self-fulfilling prophecy. I think that it's going to be very bad, so in the end it's very bad. Okay? That's a sports psychology. So they teach the soccer player to have positive thoughts, not negative thoughts. Because you imagine in your mind, you see yourself missing the penalty in your mind, then you're going to miss the penalty. Do you understand? Yes. So they do positive visualization. They imagine themselves scoring the penalty in a positive way, then they have a better, more chance of scoring the penalty. So that's psychology. Did you ever study psychology? Are you interested in psychology? Yes. Do you think psychology affects financial markets or not? Psychology affects financial markets or doesn't affect financial markets? Affects, right? Robert Schiller is the main person who, he wrote a book, Robert Schiller is a professor in Yale. Right, he called his book Irrational Exuberance. Irrational, you understand irrational? So people sometimes act in the irrational way. Okay, are you rational? Do you always act in the rational way? Not always. If you go to the horse racing, do you bet on the horse because of the color of the uniform or because of the past history of the horse? Hmm? Some people just bet because of the color of the uniform. Is that rational or irrational? Irrational. irrational. Are humans always rational or sometimes irrational? Sometimes irrational, right? So the psychology can have an effect. So, but it's only when, if, we, if I take a penalty where there's no goalkeeper, Right? Am I going to think, oh, I'm going to miss? No, there's no problem. I just walk up and score the goal. Okay? So that's the white area. There's no problem, right? There's no way that I can miss. But in the gray area, people start to have some doubt. Maybe my investment will lose money. Maybe the economy is going to be bad next year. Okay? So they start to have the doubt. You understand? Pessimism? Yes. Is this glass half full or half empty? Half full. half full or half empty? Half full. Anybody say half empty? <laughs> no? You're optimistic people? Most CEOs are very optimistic or overconfident, right? Uh, so, actually, in Ireland, the prime president of Ireland blamed this for the crisis. He said, everything's okay. I'm doing a great job. Economy is fine. Just people are pessimistic. So one time he got into a, bit, a lot of trouble because he said a lot of people was pessimistic about the Irish economy before the crisis. And he said, why don't they just go away and commit suicide? He said in the speech, all these pessimistic people just go home and commit suicide. Do you think that the prime minister can say that? President can say that? It's okay? No, oh, but it just shows he was getting very annoyed, right? Because a lot of people were pessimistic about the economy in Ireland. Okay? So he thought this is going to create a big problem. But the problem in Ireland was not just pessimism. Of course, the economy had the real estate bubble <coughs> we talked about before, right? So real estate bubble was the problem, not the pessimism. But what does the president want to say? He did a bad job or pessimism is the problem? Which do you think the president is going to say? Right? So politicians like this kind of psychological thing. They say, just people are pessimistic. If people are more positive, then everything will be okay. Right? That might be right in the grey or white area, but not in the black area. Okay? Ireland was in black area. Then you can't solve your problem by being optimistic. Right? Do you understand? So, <coughs> this can affect in the grey area. So we have to think about what stops investors from leaving. Transaction cost. Do you understand transaction cost? 
I have to pay a fee every time I sell the stocks, sell the bonds, sell the real estate. Okay, I need to pay a fee to the Budong San or the other people. It's not easy to get credit loans. Okay, so I got a loan to buy the real estate in Korea, but if I sell that, can I get a loan to buy real estate in China or Mongolia? Okay, I have to get new new loans. Okay, but it's getting easier because markets are getting more efficient. Okay. So when we look at the 90s, this is one reason why the currency crisis is more frequent. Nowadays, investors can move their money very quickly and easily. Okay? Transaction cost is lower. I can sell my stocks in Korea very quickly because of the computers and the technology. Okay? So next one, actually they did some study on the crisis in Ireland and they found this was a big factor in the Irish crisis, herding. Okay? What is a herd? What does herd mean in English? It's a group of animals, right? So the typical uh, picture of a herd is a lot of buffalo running off a cliff, right? Have you ever seen that picture? Why does the buffalo run off the cliff? Here we have a cliff, and here we have a buffalo. I'm very good at art. <laughs> buffalo is running off a cliff. Right? Have you ever seen that happening? Yes. Buffalo yes. runs over the cliff. But there's a herd of buffalo. There's a lot of them, right? This buffalo also runs over the cliff. Why? Why does this one run over the cliff too? He's copying. He's just following this one. Is he looking in front or just looking at the back of this one? He's just looking at the back of this one. He's just following this one. Do you understand? Yes. Copying him. Following him. He runs over the cliff. He runs over the cliff too. Is he smart? No. No. Right? So a lot of animals do like that. Sheep and other animals. They herd. Herd means moving together. Okay? Do human beings do that too? Are human beings smarter than animals? Uh. Huh? Are humans smarter than animals? Sometimes. Sometimes they're not, right? Sometimes they just follow the other humans blindly, just like animals. Okay? That's the herding. Herding problem. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> we assumed that we talked about efficient markets before. So efficient markets, people make the best use of the information. Everybody looks at all the information, all the information is available, we make the best use of the information. Okay. But however, this is an example of herding. Uh, Rob Schiller, who works in Yale, he did a lot of research on psychology in markets, okay? So there was the stock market crash in China this year, very similar, right? In China, stock market last year, up this year, down, right? A lot in Shanghai. Is that, does that, do you think people are acting rationally or irrationally? Irrationally. Irrationally, right? So this was happening in the U US in 1987. The US had a big stock market crash. Do you know the movie Wall Street? Oh, yes. There was a movie made about this, okay? So Robert Schiller went down to the trading floor. He was a researcher. And he started to ask investors, why are you selling your stock? Are you checking all the information about the companies? That the company is not going to make a lot of profit next year or will make a lot of profit the next year? Okay? And investors said no. Why am I selling my stock? Because prices are going down. I'm just copying everybody else. Okay. Why were the people selling all their stock in China? Did, did they suddenly change their mind? Here they looked at one company, like Alibaba, <coughs> and they say Alibaba is an excellent company with excellent profit opportunities for the next 10 years. And then suddenly here they change their mind and say, no, 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 Alibaba is not going to make big profit in the next 10 years, in two months. What do you think? Did they analyze all the financial account of Alibaba? No and change their mind about Alibaba's profit opportunities? No. Oh, no, then why were they selling their stocks? Herding the other box. Herding, right? Human beings moving together as the herd. Stock market goes up, stock market goes down. A lot, right? Property prices, the same problem. Okay, so let, I mean, what you should do as an investor is think for yourself, okay? And look at the information and think, is it a good idea to buy stocks, right? Ireland has a population of 4 million people, okay? 
There were 300,000 empty properties in Ireland at the time of the real estate boom. Okay? Unoccupied properties. But people are still paying a really high price for houses. Does that make sense? No. No, if they look at the facts, there's a lot of empty properties all around Ireland. Okay? But do people stop to look at the facts? No. They say, oh, my neighbor bought a house, and I, the other person bought a house, and they made a lot of money. Okay? So they don't stop to look at the facts. Do you understand that problem? Yes. What are you going to do in the future? Are you going to look at the facts and look at all the information, or just follow the other people? Follow them. <laughs> That's okay if you're going on the way up, right? But not the way down. Okay? You can lose your money. Get if you follow the people here, then you're going to lose a lot of money. Okay? So you have to think for yourself. Okay? Uh, so, this is herding. So, in the Irish crisis, was a very clear real estate crisis. They said herding had a big part to play. Because the people wanted to copy the other people and buy in the real estate and increase the price. Okay? So Schiller researched about this and he found that yes, investors, they have this problem. Herding problem, right? So here's Rob Schiller. Okay, so you can check he has a case. You have uh, a lot of time now in your vacation time. So I can suggest that you take his financial markets course in, in Yale. It's quite a good course. Okay? It has the subtitle and the course and all the information. Okay? So you can get on this link. And he writes articles on Project Syndicate. We already looked at Project Syndicate before. Okay? So he's, we looked at Paul Krugman as a top researcher for currency crisis. Robert Schiller for psychology in markets. Okay? So next one is Contagion. Are you wearing your mask today? <laughs> No, you're not wearing your mask today. Are you, it's there. It's there. <laughs> Are you afraid of contagion from the other students? Do you understand <laughs> contagion? Uh, hmm? uh, no. No. no problem, but it is my signature. <laughs> you're not afraid of contagion? <laughs> but you understand contagion, right? That was my signature. Just your signature fashion. <laughs> well, fashion move. Yes. Okay, I understand. So, uh, what kind of sickness is contagious? Can you tell me? What is a contagious disease? Uh, Blue. Mm -hmm. So, contagious means easily passed from one person to another. So, flu is a good example, right? You have the flu. Do you have the flu? No? Is anybody coughing today or sneezing? No? You look a little bit. Huh? Then don't sit next to them, right? <laughs> or don't shake their hands. You can catch the flu from them. It's contagious. Do you think that we can have contagion in financial markets? Yes. 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 yes, right? So we have a link between countries. Like you shake hands with somebody or sit next to them. It's like a link, okay? So a currency crisis in one country can worsen the economy of another country. So. If we look at the Southeast Asian countries, we saw this with Thailand, right? Thai devalues their currency. Thailand has a very cheap currency. Then their exports are very cheap compared to Malaysia. Then Malaysia can't sell their exports because Thais are so cheap, okay? So countries can be perceived as a group, like Latin American countries. They have a common culture, perhaps a Latin temperament, okay? So People might say, we had a crisis in Brazil. People might take their money out of Argentina or take their money out of other countries. Okay? They do a lot of trade together. Okay? So, uh, in the European crisis, this is a problem, right? This is a big problem because Greece is not a big problem. Greece is just 2 or 3% of the European economy. Okay? But if Greece leaves the Eurozone, there could be the contagion effect. Investors start to worry about maybe Spain will be next, or maybe Portugal will be next. So what are investors going to do? Invest in Spain and Portugal, or take their money out of Spain and Portugal? Take the money out of Spain and Portugal. Do you understand? So maybe Spain and Portugal is just in the gray area. Okay? They're in the gray area. They're doing okay. okay? Maybe they can recover. 
getting better. For the next thing, Greece decides to leave the euro. Okay, they get some contagion effect. Investors think, oh, Greece left the euro. Maybe Spain and Portugal will leave the euro. Okay, so then they get dragged down into the black area. Okay, do you understand that idea? Yes. So we're in the gray area, we're quite sensitive. If investors lose a lot of confidence for some reason, we can be dragged down into the black area. So political commitment is also subject to contagion effects because it's a little bit like group mentality. Okay? If everybody in the class does their homework, that's okay, right? But one student says, I'm not doing the homework. Maybe another student will say, I'm not doing the homework either. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> so they won't say by themselves, but they'll wait first for somebody else to say, I'm not doing the homework, and then they'll copy them. <laughs> so this happened in, the, in 1992 with Britain and the gold standard, right? First Britain says, I'm not staying in the gold standard, or I'm not staying in the ERM. And then the other countries, they didn't really want to be in the ERM, but maybe they weren't brave enough to be the first one. Right? So they wait for Britain to do first, and then they say, well, Britain's not staying in the ERM, so I'm not staying either. I'm leaving too. Okay, so this is a problem. If, if political commitment is subject to contagion effects, right? It's like you're having a party. You invite everyone to the party, and then she says she's not going. Right? And then she's very popular. So he likes her, so he's not going to go to the party. Right? And then he's his friend, he's not going to go to the party. So political commitment is a little bit similar. If one person breaks the political commitment, the other countries can do too. So contagion can reflect irrational behavior. Okay? Again, individuals, individuals can be irrational. Maybe Spain and Portugal are not planning to leave the euro. Okay? But just they're irrational. They think, oh no, just in case. right? It could be possible. Right, so, <laughs> there can also be positive contagion. Mexico and Argentina had some good reforms in the 1990s. This helped countries like Brazil, who didn't do reforms. So investors irrationally thinking, although Brazil didn't do any reforms, Argentina and Mexico economy is improving, so I'm going to invest in Argentina and Mexico. Uh, so let's take just a little break there to discuss these three things with our partner. So discuss self-fulfilling crisis, herding, and contagion with your partner. So three things. Self-fulfilling crisis, uh, herding, and contagion. So discuss these three psychological issues in the crisis. That's a big problem, right? How are you going to punish or penalize the other country? You can use sanction, trade sanction, right? But uh, it's not easy. And even if you punish the other country, they're going to retaliate. They're going to do trade sanction against you. So you're punishing yourself. So it's not easy to it's not easy to punish a country in the international world. If we have a global government, then it, we can make some. Like in the US, one state does something wrong. They cut the federal funding. They get no more money for defense, they get no more money for healthcare, no more money for social services, right? So, US states can get punished, you know what I mean? But in Europe, they don't have any fiscal transfer, right? System. What international court? We can take a court on a case against another country, yes, and the International Court of Justice, but, uh, you know, like Australia and Japan about the whaling, they went to the International Court of Justice, right? But, uh, I mean, there's no enforcement. Countries have to agree. They can, you can't force them to go to the court. It's not like a country. 
I, I can, you do something wrong, I can force you to go to the court with me. But the court, countries have to go to the ICJ voluntarily. They have to agree to go there. So, punishments, we can't really think about punishment working that well. Okay, so the first one who can answer what is self-fulfilling crisis? What does self-fulfilling crisis mean? Yes, pessimism starts spreading among investors. You understand pessimism? So in the end, what they imagine becomes real. Okay? Like missing the penalty. Okay, what about hurting? What does hurting mean? Most people are following the small group. Some group. Without what? Following the group without? Without rational thinking. Okay? Without studying the information. Hurting. Okay? Uh, contagion. What is contagion? What affects other countries? Why does it affect other countries? They have some link between them, right? Like Latin America, they're the same people, right? Latin people. Or they do not trade together geographically close. They can get contagion. So then let's move on to the next one. Market manipulation. Because of these problem of hurting, right, uh, and so on, self-fulfilling expectations, people can make a big profit. This is the Shanghai stock market, just take for example, okay? How could I make a big profit if I know this is going to happen? Uh, I'm selling, uh, I'm buying the low price. Buy here. Yes, selling high price. Sell here. Buy here. Sell here. Okay? Do you understand? Yes. What do you think? Do traders and speculators like the market to look like this?